Scapa Flow, a body of water in the Orkney Islands, Scotland, has a rich and complex history, particularly during the tumultuous years of World War II. Its strategic location and natural harbor made it a significant naval base for the Royal Navy, serving as a pivotal hub for naval operations and a shelter for Britain's fleet. This article aims to provide a comprehensive account of Scapa Flow during World War II, drawing on various sources to paint a detailed picture of its role, the events that unfolded, and the experiences of those who served there. The Naval Base and its Importance Scapa Flow's geographical position made it an ideal location for the British fleet, providing a well-protected anchorage away from German air bases. The base was home to numerous destroyers, battleships, and aircraft carriers of the British fleet. Its location allowed the British fleet to control access to the North Sea and the Atlantic, making it a vital asset in the war effort. Fortifying Scapa Flow At the onset of the war, the British began fortifying the entrances to Scapa Flow, extending these defenses to cover most of Orkney. By 1940, Scapa Flow had become an island fortress, the largest integrated defensive network of its kind in Europe, manned by as many as 50,000 Commonwealth troops. The Churchill barriers were constructed to block off the eastern approaches to Scapa Flow. These were a series of four causeways, linking the islands of Orkney and creating a physical barrier to enemy submarines. The barriers were primarily built using concrete blocks and were a significant engineering feat. In addition to the Churchill barriers, blockships were used to further deter enemy submarines. These were old or captured ships that were deliberately sunk at strategic points. The blockships served as an additional layer of defense, making it even more difficult for enemy submarines to penetrate Scapa Flow. Anti-aircraft defenses were also installed around Scapa Flow to protect against aerial attacks. These included anti-aircraft guns and barrage balloons. The guns would provide a deadly hail of fire against any enemy aircraft brave enough to attack, while the barrage balloons deterred low-flying aircraft, making it harder for them to accurately drop their bombs. The sinking of HMS Royal Oak Despite these extensive defenses, Scapa Flow was not impervious to attacks. On the night of October 13-14, 1939, the German submarine U-47, under the command of Gunther Preen, penetrated Scapa Flow's defenses and sank the British battleship HMS Royal Oak. The attack resulted in the loss of 833 lives. This event led to a significant strengthening of the defenses around Scapa Flow. The Arctic Convoys Scapa Flow also served as the base for the Arctic Convoy Escorts, one of the most dangerous naval operations of the war. The convoys were responsible for delivering vital supplies to the Soviet Union, an operation that was under constant threat from German U-boats and aircraft. One of the most notable naval engagements involving ships from Scapa Flow was the Battle of the North Cape in December 1943. The British fleet, including ships from Scapa Flow, engaged and sank the German battleship Scharnhorst. Out of a crew of about 1,600 men on the Scharnhorst, there were only 36 survivors. First-hand accounts. First-hand accounts from the period provide a vivid depiction of life at Scapa Flow during the war. These accounts offer a personal perspective on the events that unfolded, capturing the experiences of those who served at Scapa Flow. One such account comes from Eric Cowham, a crew member of HMS Matchless. Callum's account provides a personal and detailed insight into the life of a sailor during World War II, offering a glimpse into the daily routines, challenges, and moments of camaraderie that characterized service at Scapa Flow. Another account comes from Lee Franklin Spitzer, a World War II veteran and merchant mariner who served in the Atlantic and Pacific theaters during the war. His experiences, as detailed in a tribute on New Right Network, provide a first-hand account of the challenges and dangers faced by those serving at sea during the war. His stories of survival and resilience offer a unique perspective on the human experience of World War II. John D. Little, a member of the 2nd Platoon, 607th Quartermaster Graves Registration Company, provides a different perspective on the war at Scapa Flow. His account offers insights into the logistical and emotional challenges faced by those tasked with managing the aftermath of battles. These first-hand accounts serve as a valuable resource, enriching our understanding of Scapa Flow's role during World War II and the experiences of those who served there. For those interested in further exploring first-hand accounts of World War II, there are several books that provide a wealth of personal narratives. Forgotten Voices of the Second World War is a collection of personal testimonies from those who experienced the war firsthand. The Good War, an oral history of World War II, offers a diverse range of personal narratives, capturing the experiences of soldiers, civilians, and political leaders alike.
Words of War, Second World War Revealed in Eyewitness Letters, Speeches, and Diaries provides a unique perspective on the war, featuring personal writings from those who lived through it. These books, and others like them, offer invaluable insights into the human experience of World War II, complementing the broader historical narrative with personal stories of courage, resilience, and sacrifice. Scuttling of the German High Seas Fleet one of the most dramatic events in Scapa Flow's history occurred not during World War II, but in the aftermath of World War I. On June 21, 1919, the German High Seas Fleet, interned at Scapa Flow following the armistice, was scuttled by its own crews. This act was ordered by the German commander, Admiral Ludwig von Reuter, who feared that his ships would be seized by the British. The German fleet, comprising nine battleships, five battlecruisers, seven light cruisers, and 49 destroyers, was interned at Scapa Flow while the details of the peace talks were worked out. The final decision on the fate of these ships was to be taken at the Versailles Peace Conference. However, von Reuter, not kept informed of the progress of the talks, decided to scuttle his own fleet. On the morning of June 21, 1919, with the British fleet out of the harbor on exercise, von Reuter gave the order to scuttle the German ships. The crews opened the seacocks of their vessels, allowing water to flood in. The ships were deliberately flooded from one side first so that they would capsize and sink, making salvage more difficult. By the end of the day, most of the German high seas fleet had sunk. This was the single greatest loss of warships in history, with 52 vessels sinking to the seabed. Nine German sailors were killed during the scuttling and the subsequent chaos. The scuttling of the fleet at Scapa Flow had significant implications. It removed the German fleet as a bargaining chip in the peace negotiations, but it was also seen as a hostile act by the British. In Germany, however, it was seen as a way of restoring some honor to the navy, as the ships had not fallen into enemy hands. The sunken ships posed a significant hazard to navigation in Scapa Flow. In the 1920s and 1930s, many of the ships were salvaged and broken up. Today, seven of the wrecks remain on the seabed, now classified as scheduled monuments and protected against unauthorized change. These wrecks are a popular site for divers, but they also serve as a stark reminder of this dramatic event in naval history. Conclusion Scapa Flow's history during World War II is a testament to its strategic importance and the resilience of those who served there. From the fortification of the harbor to the sinking of the HMS Royal Oak, the Arctic convoys, and the personal experiences of those who served, Scapa Flow played a pivotal role in the war effort. Its story is one of courage, determination, and ingenuity in the face of adversity. Today, Scapa Flow serves as a poignant reminder of the past. The sunken wrecks of the German high seas fleet, the remnants of the Churchill barriers, and the stories of those who served there all contribute to its rich history. As we reflect on these events, we are reminded of the sacrifices made by those who served and the strategic importance of this remote yet vital harbor. Recommendations for further research. For those interested in delving deeper into the history and significance of Scapa Flow, there are several books and websites that provide comprehensive insights. Here are a few recommendations. 1. Landscapes of Scapa Flow. This book provides a detailed account of Scapa Flow's geography and its strategic importance during the World Wars. It's available at the Arcadian Bookshop. 2. Scapa Flow, The Defenses of Britain's Great Fleet Anchorage 1914-45. This book, available from Books from Scotland, provides an in-depth look at the fortifications of Scapa Flow and their role in protecting Britain's fleet. 3. Dive Scapa Flow, by Rod MacDonald. This book, available from Whittles Publishing, is a comprehensive guide to diving in Scapa Flow, offering insights into the sunken wrecks that lie beneath its waters. In terms of websites, here are a few that provide valuable insights into Scapa Flow and its surrounding region. 1. Scapa Flow, Historic Wreck Site, www.scapaflowrex.com. 2. History Beneath the Waves, www.scapaflowrex.com history. 3. Scapa Flow, www.submerge.co.uk slash scapaflow. These resources offer a wealth of information for anyone interested in learning more about Scapa Flow and its role in World War II.